you know, Dr. Lehman really made the point that muscle is your health organ. It is your longevity organ. Um, all things being equal, and let's take anabolic steroids out. All things being equal, you have a hard time convincing me that a person with more muscle is not healthier than a person with less. It is a metabolic sink. You know, you take people with this, like, like let's, if two people have the same level of body fatness, all things being equal, another one of them has more muscle tissue, I can almost assure you they'll have better blood markers of metabolic health. Um, because muscle tissue just, it's, it's metabolically greedy. It's going to, for lack of a better term, gobble up, you know, triglycerides and uh, LDL cholesterol and glucose and like uh, some of these things that cause problems in the bloodstream. Uh, when you have people that have more muscle mass, it, it's, it's just, uh, there's very few downsides to it. And if you look at longevity after a certain age, very closely tied to grip strength and lean mass. So, yeah. um, and when you consider muscle on a per weight basis is the by far the largest organ in your body. And people don't think about it as an organ, but it fits every definition of an organ. It sends out hormonal signals. Yeah. It's an endocrine organ, yeah. It's an endocrine organ. Yeah. Yeah. It sends out hormones. It integrates hormones. It has crosstalk with other organs. Yep. You, you can't find a reason to not call it an organ. And so many people are meta. Gabrielle's point that she makes in the book is that we've spent this focus on trying to get people to lose fat, which yes, would help. But we spent so little time trying to get them to build muscle. And yeah. yes, losing fat would help, but building muscle would help too. And like this one approach is failing, which is, hey, eat less, you know, uh, lose fat. And unfortunately, when people diet, you know, most people lose, you know, anywhere from 30 to 40 percent of the weight they lose is from lean tissue. Um, now, if you're resistant to training to high protein diet, you can pretty much knock that down to almost zero, yep. you know, but people don't think about that. And then when they regain the weight, a lot of times they tend to regain it almost exclusively as fat loss. And so you can create this scenario over time with people with you know multiple you know dieting attempts and relapses where they're getting less and less lean tissue and more and more fat tissue and just getting more and more unhealthy over time. So I do think a shift in emphasis of, hey, lose fat, great, but make sure you're focusing on like trying to build lean tissue too, because it's very, very important for yeah. health. It's cognitive enhancing. It's uh, anti-cancer effects. <laughs> the more muscle you have, I mean, it's just like across the board, right? And I think the big thing is uh, probably from a longevity standpoint, just the independence that you have, and you're less likely to fall and break your hip and stuff. You well, know, that so just that strength, which correlates with muscle and bone density, too. I got my DEXA scan, and my bone density was like off the charts. It was hey, like I don't know. Hey, I've uh, never broken a single bone in my body. Uh, yeah. I mean, I know that's anecdote, but, you know, like people, it's not just longevity. It's how do you want to feel? Like, can you add years to your life? Maybe. But I think the better question, Peter Atia does a great job of describing this. He's like, when it's time to go, you basically want to fall off a cliff. Like, you want to feel really good until your body, like, until you've exhausted everything. And then you just die pretty quickly. You know what I yeah. mean? Um, and like what you don't want is, yeah, you live to be 75 or 80, but the last 20 years of your life or the last 10 years of your life, you're like not very mobile. You can't do stuff you like. You're going from yeah. doctor's appointment to doctor's appointment because you have so many issues you're dealing with. Like I, I want to go, and if you look at people who are in their 70s, 80s, even 90s, there was a, yeah. A video of a guy who was like 90 years old deadlifting uh, 400 pounds. You know? That's a great point because, I mean, you started, we both started early, like 13 years old. So that's, uh, you started investing in your metabolic 401k, right? So 
uh, at the yeah. at the age. And that's I mean, that muscle that you build that you're also building bone density and it's like you're making a deposit into your metabolic 401k. And a lot of people feel like if, you know, they're 70, 80 years old, that if they start training now, they're going to hurt themselves. It's not going to be, but that's not true. I mean, it's like, I think, I mean, she harps on that in the book too, right? So it's like, it's so important that, it, you know, the time to start, you know, resistance training is now, you yeah. know, depositing into, yeah, investing into your metabolic 401k, right? If you're 12 years old or yep. 80 years old, the time to start is now. Um, and there was, a, and I'll just, I'll leave with this, which is, there was a study across the street uh, where I was doing my, my PhD where they took frail elderly. And I think the definition was basically they could walk unassisted, but they had trouble standing up, you know? Um, and so they took these people that had difficulty standing up and over 16 weeks progressively overloaded them. And that was at first just sitting down to a high chair and standing back up, right? By the end of the study, Virtually all of them had gained significant amounts of lean body mass. And some of them were basically like doing, like squatting down to a low box, squatting back up with virtually no problems. Your muscle is the most resilient plastic organ in your body. By plastic, I mean adaptable. Your muscle tissue is incredibly adaptable. I, I, have, a, I have a book right over here called Skeletal Muscle. Structure, function, and plasticity. Where is it? Somewhere in there. And um, you just learn, like, look at what human beings can do. You can be me and squat seven, 650 pounds. I could have taken this body and also gone run marathons. And your muscle will adapt to whatever it is you do. That's yeah. incredible. That is incredible. And your metabolism too is omnivores. We could eat pure fat or we could eat like purely vegetarian or purely carnivore. And I can, we can survive and live and yep. might not be optimal, of course, but, uh, but yeah, it's like, you know, muscle and metabolism is like incredibly adaptable. And you so look at, a very um, good point. there was an MRI. I saw an MRI of 70 year old uh, Ironman competitors, like quadricep. They compared that to somebody who was sedentary at his age and then somebody who was sedentary at like age 30. And you can tell his muscle is healthier and more dense, like just looks better than even the 30-year-old the who's sedentary. Like if you use, and again, like you said, it's just like investing, right? You didn't say for retirement, you're 40 years old. So start now. All is not lost. If you go hard for 10, 20 years, you can still have a really good retirement fund, right? Yeah. If you go hard for 10, 20 years, you can still build significant lean mass and have a much better quality of life by the end. And even if you're 60, now's the time. Yeah. You, you'll notice benefits within weeks. You'll be stronger within weeks. Yeah.